I'm here with Dr. Vandana Shiva at the National Heirloom Expo in California, celebrating the, the growth of heirloom and open pollinated non-GMO seed and real food. Uh, thanks so much for being here. It's a pleasure. Look at it. I mean, it gives joy. I know, it's incredible. Yeah. And uh, so we're just about to, to enter the, the next annual seed and food freedom fortnight in October. And uh, I heard that uh, Monsanto recently created and awarded themselves the World Food Prize. But uh, in response, you've created the real World Food Prize, celebrating food heroes around the world. I was just wondering what a, what a food hero is to you and, and what this means. A food hero is anyone who's either keeping alive or recreating a real food system. A real food system begins with real seed. Real seed is not a manufacture. It is a self-organized living system. And therefore it is diverse. You wouldn't be able to see this diversity in industrial seed. Real food is based on the loving care of farmers who use their hands and their minds and their hearts in resonance as one. They have intelligence and they have 10,000 years of intelligence. And with them is working millions of years of intelligence of nature. That is real intelligence. That is real knowledge of farming. That is what gives real food. Real food is not removing the value in nutrition, removing the value in taste, removing the value in quality, but creating profits, which is called value added. It is value depleted in the real sense and value added for profits. Real food tastes good, real food looks good. You know in real food who grew it. So anyone who is saving seeds, anyone who is an organic farmer, anyone who's creating local markets, anyone who's creating a local distribution, local cafe, artisanal processing, they are all food heroes. Well, I, I dare say we have a few food heroes here today. What, um, what is the importance, do you think, of celebrating real food and, and biodiversity and the saving of seeds in a situation like this where uh, we can use that in the constant struggle against companies that want to patent seed and uh, kind of go against everything that we've built over thousands of years. Exhibitions like this, expositions like this, are a hundred universities in one place. There are going to be a thousand six hundred children coming through here, learning about diversity through the celebration. And knowledge as celebration is far more effective than knowledge as imposition. Yeah. Which is why everything we've learned through imposition, we've forgotten so fast. <laughs> but the taste of a good tomato or the feel of living soil is knowledge that never goes away. You so, don't need to enforce a good garden. Do you? No, you don't need to enforce a good seed or a good garden. Um, the militarized enforcement only comes from fake food, fake seed, fake people. So it should be pretty easy for us to combat this battle in a peaceful way. I mean, what it, during the seed and food freedom fortnight in, uh, from the 2nd to the 16th of October, what are some simple things that that us real people can do with you know, families and children to, to ensure that we have real food security in the, in the years to come. So there's something very simple that we're calling for throughout the year, saying find the seeds of freedom and protect them and grow the gardens of hope no matter what. It could be a pot in your kitchen or your balcony. It could be a patch of land. If you're in a school, it could be the school garden. If you're in a community, get some community land. Throughout the wars, people fed themselves through what were called victory gardens because there was no trade. But people didn't starve because they were growing their food. We need to realize we are in a new kind of war declared by corporations like Monsanto. But it's one that can't be fought violently, is it? It can't be fought violently. It can't be fought on their terms. It has to be responded to in a loving and peaceful way celebrating this diversity 
celebrating the people who are aware of this diversity, spreading the knowledge and creating joy in the process. The reason our movement is strong is we are not feeling miserable. Yeah? We are growing gardens with joy, we are saving seeds with joy. But we are also asking people to do something very simple. If, if someone comes around and says your organic garden is a hazard, which they're doing, they're trying to create laws, then you have to smile and say, uh, no, it's not. For millennia, organic has fed us. Um, GMOs are a hazard, not organic. The 16th of October, World Food Prize, give it to the real heroes in your neighborhood. Create a food community, become aware. Don't just shut your mind to the Walmarts and the supermarkets and say, where can I go for real food? And on 12th of March, March against Monsanto, even if it's 10 people, 20 people in your community, because a March against Monsanto is a march for life, for diversity, for the joy of living. Fantastic, and, and of course it goes a lot it goes far beyond these two weeks, doesn't it? I mean, in your, in your new book, you, you talk about food as being the, the creator or the, the essence of life. It's, yeah. it's, it's way more than just two weeks of, of seed freedom and, uh, and kind of combating things like Monsanto, isn't it? It's more it's a spiritual. More. Just like here we are, the expo will be three days. But these pumpkins didn't grow in three days. There's a life. Beyond the expo, there's a life beyond the fortnight of action. That's just meant to concentrate and converge and cohere. Ultimately, the issue of good seed and good food, real seed and real food, is a task of right livelihood. Um, seed is sacred. Food is sacred. That's why in ancient Indian learning, food as a subject speaks, not as an object. Food says, I am the creator. And we need to recognize the subjecthood of biodiversity, the subjecthood of living food, and through it reclaim our full humanity. Beautiful. So from the 2nd to the 16th of October, the, the Seed Freedom Fortnight, I guess everyone's encouraged to save seeds, engage in civil disobedience against these ridiculous seed laws, nominate food, real food heroes in their communities, and, uh, and, and head to the March Against Monsanto on the 12th of October. Anything else that you would add to that? No, all I say is, for every seed saved and every garden created, we are not just cultivating good food, we are cultivating a new community and a new society. Sounds great to me. Vandana Shiva, thank you very much. Thank you. And good luck. Thank you. Nothing less than...